Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I want to talk about gain staging. What it is, does it matter? Does it matter to us Logic users? This is a question that's cropped up quite a bit. A lot of folks are really into this idea and want to know more about it. And surprisingly, it's sort of a controversial topic for us Logic users as well. There are some people who live and die by gain staging, and there are others who think it's complete snake's oil, that plug-in manufacturers or just ill-informed users are just totally buying into this thing that doesn't matter at all. So I want to dissect this, I want to unpack it for everyone. So first, what is gain staging? It's a really technical term. What it simply means is the amount of volume or level your tracks are hitting your processors at. So a processor would include EQ, it could include compressors. It's just how loud or quiet is your audio region or track as it's hitting the processors in your channel strip. And this can make a difference depending. So let's go back in time. You are an old analog guy or lady, and you're used to working on consoles and tape machines and outboard gear. And at that time and place, it really mattered how loud or quiet your tracks were. If your tracks were too quiet, they could be obscured by the noise of like tape hiss because tape inherently had this hiss on it that would occur while you recorded on it. Or conversely, if you were hitting your channels too hot, you could end up getting distortion and that might be pleasing in some sense and might not be pleasing in other senses. It all depends on the circumstances. But the goal, more or less, was to try to hit zero VU on a VU meter. So let me pull up a VU meter for you. This is a VU meter from Klanghelm. And we would try to hit zero on it. Now we know because we're working with peak meters, that's what your logic meters are, they're peak meters. Now we know that that roughly translates into negative 18 on the peak meter here, which results in zero VU, depending. And that was the goal. Try to hit zero VU. A lot of hardware had this suggested volume that you should run your tracks or signals at for the best operating experience. Okay, then we fast forward. We start using computers in the studio. And a lot of processors, such as the Logic EQ, it's a digital EQ. Its intent and purpose is to be as clean as possible, as non-coloring as possible, as precise as possible. So did it matter anymore? With those sort of processors, does gain staging even mean anything to us anymore? What we did learn was that you don't want to clip your input meters when you're recording at zero dB, and you don't want to clip your output meters on your stereo output at zero dB. You don't want to go to zero dB or over because you could end up experiencing digital distortion that I've covered in another video all about recording in Logic. Now, plugin manufacturers and Logic, the software team for Logic, also have developed plugins that are emulating analog gear. We have the PsyQ from Sound Toys. This emulates an EQ that they were very fond of and I'm very fond of now too because it sounds awesome. And now plugin manufacturers are in this game of creating an emulation for every piece of hardware you could think of, tape machines, consoles, EQs, compressors. We've come full circle and now it matters again. Some may think that it's not, but I'm gonna demonstrate all these concepts to you. First, let's start with the channel EQ. I have a drum loop here and I have various versions of the drum loop. And we're gonna start with this drum loop right here. I've set a game plugin at plus 24. And then I have a channel EQ plugin right after it with the output slider with negative 24. There's only a 20 hertz filter down at the bottom. But essentially, all I've done is jack up the volume going into the channel EQ. So gain, then channel EQ. And then I brought the volume down. Then I made a copy of this drum loop. And I did not jack up the volume going into it. I have not brought the volume down going out of it. It is set at zero. But what I have done on this copy is set a game plugin with the phase inverted for both the left and right signal. What does this all mean? What this means is if gain staging matters when it comes to the channel EQ, then we should be hearing some sort of coloration, some sort of change 
And because the phase is inverted on the copy, either one of two circumstances are going to occur. We're either going to hear nothing because they're exactly the same and volume doesn't matter at all when it comes to the channel EQ, or there's a little bit of a difference or some coloration from hitting the channel EQ so hard that it won't be completely silent. So let's take a listen. As you can hear, complete silence. So this is where those folks who think that gain staging is snake's oil, that's where they're coming from. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not impacting your tracks or your processors. It's foolishness. Well, what if we have an actual EQ curve on the channel EQ? So here, let me just grab some of the bands. Do that. Let's go down. Who's this? Okay. I'm going to remove the copy of the channel EQ. Copy this over. I'm going to set the output slider to zero. Okay, so same exact curve, just different volume going in and out. Let's take a listen. So once again, we hear absolutely nothing. Okay, let's move on to the logic compressor. So I have the logic compressor here. I've jacked the input all the way up by 30 decibels, the output all the way down, so it's equal going in and out, 30 and 30. I have the ratio set one to one and the threshold set to zero because I don't want to hear the effects of compression. I just want to hear the effects of volume going into the logic compressor. And then I have a copy here of that drum loop, but I don't have the compressor on there. We're just going to assume that this is going to be identical. I don't even need to have a copy of the compressor to compare against. Okay, once again, I have the gain plugin on the copy inverting the phase. Let's take a listen and see if this cancels. And it absolutely does. So once again, it's sort of painting this picture doesn't matter. Well, this is where the story starts to change a little bit. Let's go to the logic compressor. And I'm just going to start bringing up the ratio. I'm going to leave the threshold at zero. I'm going to start bringing up the ratio. Take a listen and watch. If you noticed, as soon as I started bringing up the ratio, not even much, like one to three, you know, two to one, it's already going crazy trying to compress this track because there's so much volume driving into the compressor. I don't even need to change the threshold. It's way exceeding the threshold and it starts to compress immediately. So now this starts to paint a little bit of a different picture. The compressor needs maybe some room for you to adjust ratio and threshold and really get a good compression going without it going bonkers out of the gate. Now, these are extreme circumstances, right? I'm driving up the input by 30 decibels and down by 30 decibels. I recognize that. But now this starts to paint a picture of maybe volume does matter in the way that it's hitting our processors. Let's keep moving along. Let me close all these plugins. Okay, now I have the vintage EQ collection here. I have the gain jacked up by 24 decibels. I have the output on the console here down by negative 24 decibels. I've done no EQing. I've left the drive at zero because I just want to hear what this sounds like with the input jacked up. And then on the copy here, I have the same exact settings, but the volume is set at zero because we aren't jacking up the volume going in. I'm not going to do the phase cancellation thing because I just want to hear before and after. So let's take a listen to the Vintage EQ with the input jacked up and the Vintage EQ without the input jacked up and kind of compare and contrast here. Take a listen. Did you hear that? I'll, I'll play it again. Take a listen to the kick specifically, but just notice how everything starts to in the vintage EQ number one with the jacked up input, it's a little flatter sounding. And when we switch to the one without the input jacked up, it's a little more open. The kick isn't as pancaked. Just take a listen again. I'll flip between the two. There's a subtle difference. 
And now the story starts to change again, because in this case, the team at Logic have made it a point to try to emulate analog EQ and the way that it reacts to sounds and the harmonic information contained within it. So now I'm just going to drive the output. I'm going to use the drive knob on the version that has the jacked up input. And let's just take a listen. Interesting. Now the track is starting to sound way more compressed. The kick is almost disappearing because there's presumably it's hitting against the ceiling and it's getting squashed down because of the drive. Okay, my last illustration of this point. We're going to move on to a third party plugin. And this is the PsyQ from Sound Toys. I love this EQ. It's great. I've done the same thing. I've jacked up the input by 15 decibels. I have a gain plugin on the other side of it, bringing it down by 15. So up the same amount as out. The PsyQ in between, nothing has been altered. I just want to hear the effects of volume. And then we'll switch between this PsyQ that has nothing jacked up and the output is just set at zero. Take a listen to the difference here. So clearly significantly different. The PsyQ with the jacked up input sounds kind of gross. It's distorting, it's smacking against the ceiling. There's no more headroom with this processor. It's hitting the ceiling and so it's distorting. And that's where we're trying to get to. Does gain staging matter? It depends. If you're using 99% logic plugins or digital processors that are very precise and clean, probably not. But with manufacturers creating all sorts of emulations of analog gear, it clearly matters depending on where you set the input. Some manufacturers will tell you what volume is preferred for the best operating level. Some won't. Like when I try to check out the sound toy stuff and their manuals for the side cue and the radiator and so on and so forth, they didn't specify. But with the Waves CLA 76 that emulates an 1176, it actually says negative 18 decibels full scale. And that would roughly approximate zero VU on the meter of that particular plugin. So what should you do in this case? Well, I think this is sort of paying a tribute to all the folks that commented on my pre-fadering video a couple weeks ago, where they said the pre-fadering matters because we need that to gain stage for plugins after. Your best bet, I would suggest, is to gain stage to negative 18 on the peak meters for each of your tracks. You can do that using a gain plugin. So by taking the gain plugin and bringing it down till you see negative 18, no higher, or if you're one of the lucky few that have updated to one of the more recent updates of Logic, we now have a feature called Normalize Region Gain. And I love this because it lets me be lazy. I like to gain stage based on loudness. And I do negative 23 LUFS, but you can also do it based on peak. And you can set this to negative 18. And then you can set individual regions, hit apply, and this will be applied to all your regions. And now everything is already gain stage for you. It's amazing how this works. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm creating new posts, new videos, and new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.